Hey there, Stephanie Claremont here with you today, registered dietitian, digestive health dietitian. You can find me over at stephanieclaremont.com, and this is The Relief Report, our show all about helping those with irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, colitis, and any kind of digestive health issues really get back to feeling normal. We look at the research, the current evidence, and what's going on in media and the world of FODMAPs to really get you feeling fantastic. Now, I need a minute or two here to let everyone join us. When we're doing this Facebook Live show, it takes a second, well, it takes a couple of minutes for people to be notified and let just be informed that we're here and we're live. So I'd like to take a second and welcome everyone who's watching the replay because I know that not everyone can watch our show live at 10 a.m. on Wednesday mornings, and that's Eastern time. So whenever you make time to watch this quick little show, I'm happy to see you here. I love when you're able to post comments, questions, say hi, whether you're a replay watcher or you're watching live. I can see Wendy's here and said hello. I can see those numbers coming up, and now people are joining us live. So welcome, everyone. We're going to get started with our show. Now, before we get started, as you know, I'm a registered dietitian, of course, but also I'm someone that has been diagnosed with IBS in 2007. So I'm really just doing my very best to advocate for your health and keep you up to date with all the things that can get you feeling really, really well. Hi, Wendy. Wendy says hi. Alita says, yay, you can hear and see me. Welcome to the show, guys. So, you know, in my journey through IBS for those four years that I struggled and tried to figure things out, I pieced things together, I, you know, tried this food, I tried to cut that, and I did all these things. I just want you to know that you're not alone if you are struggling to figure out what's causing gas and bloating, discomfort, urgent bowel movements, diarrhea, constipation, any of that kind of stuff. You're not alone. I think there's a lot of people out there struggling, you know, millions and millions of Canadians, Americans, people around the world. So... Let's get you better, all right? So in today's show, we're going to talk about a couple of different things. We're going to have a cheese discussion, because we all like cheese. Uh, we are going to talk about migraines and how they're related to irritable bowel syndrome, and some things that are going on in the big business world, which I think is a good conversation for us to have. So let's start with some updates from Monash. Now, Monash has really been working their butts off to be testing different kinds of foods to let us know what's okay and not okay on the low FODMAP diet. If you don't know what the low FODMAP diet is, it is a diet where for four to six weeks, just a very short period of time, you cut out all foods that are really easily fermented in the gut and contain these very easily fermented or poorly digested sugars. It's a short-term diet, but we're starting to see a lot of it in media. A lot of physicians and health practitioners are handing out um, food lists to follow the low FODMAP diet, but it's very important that you know that this is a short-term diet. It is not something that we do for life. It's very, very different from, you know, if you had heart disease or diabetes or a celiac and you follow a diet for life. The low FODMAP diet is a short-term elimination diet, okay? But we like to talk about FODMAP foods here and the low FODMAP diet to make that connection for people who are in the elimination phase or have identified what FODMAPs bother them and what don't so we can all eat better for digestion. All right, and if you have any questions about FODMAPs, I want you to pop them here in the chat. I'd be happy to answer them for you. Uh, we also have a getting started guide with the low FODMAP diet if you need some help with the low FODMAP diet. And Alita here, um, can, one of our Clarity coaches, can post the link to sign up for that guide if it's something that you need to FODMAPs. Now, Monash, our experts on FODMAPs, um, just added a, did a new test and added a cheese to the app. So if you're following the low FODMAP diet, you want to get the apps that are available for your food list and not use a paper list because those can get outdated pretty fast. So my lovely Monash people are in Australia, so it's a little different from the, the things that we have here in North America. Um, but they added something called Quark. Quark? Am I saying it right? kind of looks like quack, but with an R, um, which is a fresh, soft cheese that can be used in sweet and savory dishes. Now, I think this is really cool and just something to mention to all my FODMAPers out there and anyone who's trying to limit the amount of FODMAPs they have in their diet um, because, also for anyone who's managing lactose, because lactose is a FODMAP, and so if you're trying to eat low lactose, then this quark, fresh, soft, versatile cheese could be used. But what I think is really interesting is, you know, they don't, we haven't tested all of the foods for FODMAPs and, you know, for how good they are in digestion, but it just means that we can try more of these fresh and soft cheeses. And for all my European lovelies out there, um, you know, Stuart, my husband, and I went to Portugal for our honeymoon, and there was tons of beautiful, fresh, soft cheese, like 
right, like so fresh, <laughs> like really, really fresh, a couple days old. Um, and when I was in Portugal, in the south of Portugal, I ate this cheese every day. I ate cheese and bread and rice and fresh fish and all this stuff and totally had no issues with that kind of cheese. So even though it's not the same cheese, I think that really allows us to understand as we're expanding our diets, as we're bringing foods back, as we're trying to identify what foods are bothering us and what aren't, that a soft cheese, no matter where you are in the world, is definitely something to try. So whether you're in Italy or Portugal or Australia, you know, I think that this is just showing us that more and more foods are okay for digestion. And we need to kind of take a big sigh and and kind of get ready to try foods and get ready to add foods back into our diet and expand our diet. It's really important that we do that so we can get back to normal. Alita has shared the link here for the free getting started guide if anybody needs help getting started with the low FODMAP diet. Now, let's head into our research update. Um, a study was recently released by the um, Nature Genetics Journal, and all of our research is actually from peer-reviewed published journal articles, so it's keeping you up to date on the evidence. And this was kind of cool. It was about um, migraines and the connection to IBS. So just to summarize really quickly, um, there was research that kind of looked at um, health claims and the connection between migraines and IBS, and they found that um, according to the head researcher, that migraines are correlated genetically to irritable bowel syndrome. So what does that mean? It means that there are more people that have both IBS and migraines than they thought. And the connection could be is that, you know, let's talk about migraines for a second. Sorry, my nose is a little bit itchy. Um, migraines are categorized as a disease of the central nervous system. Whereas irritable bowel syndrome and other digestive issues are categorized as inflammatory diseases. So we have inflammation in our digestive tract. And what they think, what they believe, and we need more research on this, is that migraines are actually linked to inflammatory conditions of the body and not just the nervous system. So what that means is that the treatment for migraines may change over time. So if you're someone that has IBS or other inflammatory bowel conditions and you suffer from migraines, this is very interesting. There is a connection there and treating your IBS or your inflammatory bowel disease properly can actually help you reduce those migraines. That there is a potential for that, which is awesome. And I know when people come into my program, the Clarity Program, and I coach my clients, you know, there's always these other, um, not always, but there's very often other issues that are coming aboard, like migraines or, you know, poor sleep or poor energy or even some reflux. And although we don't have, you know, the scientific evidence to say, here's the diet that's going to get rid of that, what I have found in my practice and with my program is that people get better digestively, but they also start to see other things get better as well, like migraines and reflux and sleep and energy. So I think the study is really great because we're starting to kind of compile and spend time doing more research on these connections, and it will be able to allow us to have some science to back up the support that we already provide to people with digestive health issues. So if you're someone that suffers with IBS and you're struggling to kind of figure it out and you have migraines as well, you know, it definitely will be worth your time to invest in a program, you know, that's going to help you with digestive health. And if you have any questions about our Clarity program, the doors are closed right now, but we will um, open them up again so you can join our waitlist if you need some support. I'd love to have you in the program and serve and support you. If you have any questions, just let me know. You can post here in our comments. You can send us a private message on Facebook, or you can always email us at info at if you need a little help. I'm here for you. All right, and finally, we have a bit of a media update, and this is where I wanted to talk a little about big business. So um, last year, Nestle uh, is a big company in North America and all, all over the world. Um, they got into the low FODMAP diet by um, creating a drink called Pro Nourish, and this is a um, kind of like an onshore, or like a supplement drink. It gives you extra energy if you're trying to gain weight, or maybe you're sick. You know, you want to have um, some extra energy, and, and you can have this Pro Nourish drink, which is low in FODMAPs. But we saw Nestle kind of start to get into the world of FODMAPs last year. Which, as soon as we see big business start to invest in um, digestive health, it's actually very exciting because we know we're going to get more resources, more products, more information, more support. Um, it's going to be sponsored <laughs> by a big business company, but we're going to get more resources, which is 
it is really, really cool. Um, and so um, Nestle is releasing more and more resources as we're seeing from them, some classes and some videos and now some, some cooking videos for FODMAPs. So, you know, I think for those of us with digestive health that have been dealing with it for a long time, you know, it's been 10 years for me. I know for some of you, it's been a long time, even just a couple of years is long enough. We really felt alone. We've really felt isolated. We've really felt like we've had no resources. Like I was a dietitian and I had no one to turn to, to help me with digestive health issues. Um, and so over time, we've really seen some incredible people like Sue Shepard in Australia and, and Patsy and Kate in the U.S. kind of stand up, um, you know, and myself kind of shout from the Canadian rooftops uh, and, and try to really support our people with um, protocols and diets and programs. And so what we're going to see over the next 12 months, guys, is more and more um, businesses coming in and offering different resources and support and selling things. So selling, you know, beverages, products, um, food, treats, like all kinds of all kinds of things. So I just want you to kind of enter into this world of digestive health and know that our world is going to change and that there's going to be more resources and more things, which is really, really, really wonderful, I think. But we need to enter into those resources also with some thoughtfulness. Um, you know, who's, who's, you know, providing these resources, um, you know, what their intentions are, how they can help, and how they fit into our lives. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're all going to go out and buy tons of low FODMAP foods and snacks and drinks and all kinds of things and fill our refrigerators and cupboards with all of this processed food, um, but there is a place for that in our lives. So just remember that. And of course, if you have any questions or you read anything or you find a new study or you find a new product, you have questions about anything like that, please post right here on our Facebook page. I'm here to support and serve you and answer your questions. And of course, if you need any more help, jump on over and join our waitlist. I'll have our lovely Clarity Coach Alita post the link to um, our waitlist right now. So if you are looking to work with a registered dietitian who really kind of knows and gets this and has had IBS themselves, and you know, you can join our Clarity program where it's that step-by-step -step process to get you feeling well and back to normal. Um, right now, you can join the waitlist for the next time we open the doors, and our waitlist is growing and growing every day, so I hope you do join us. And of course, any questions, uh, post them here. Anything you want to see, uh, please post it. This show is for you. I love showing up for you on Wednesdays and sharing with you the latest news on finding relief, and I'm here to answer any questions you have. All right, my loves, have a wonderful week, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.